Hi and welcome to another type of light screencast from Winans Creative. Uh, today we're going to talk about part one of the catalog extension. Uh, catalog extension is a great, uh, really popular extension for typo light built by John Brand, uh, Thion in the forums and uh, handy for taking large amounts of data or images or files and presenting them to your users in a listable format on the front end, filterable by different properties, tags, searchable by different fields and things like that. Uh, and it kind of functions the similar to the new and events types of modules on uh, in terms of having a lister and a reader page for those. Uh, it also has a lot more features that uh, we'll get into at a later date. But for right now, I'm just going to show you how to set up a basic catalog in Typo Lite. Uh, so I've installed the catalog extension. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to need a listing page and a reader page, which I have set up in our site structure here. I'm uh, going to jump into catalog. And uh, in the interest in of time here, uh, uh, I've set up, pre-set up a, a, an existing catalog. I've created new catalog. Uh, and if we go in and edit that, you'll see actually uh, uh, there's a little icon when you create a new catalog over on the right-hand side that says define fields for catalog. Um, and uh, this is essentially what you're going to be doing is setting up uh, what's called a dynamic DCA for uh, this individual catalog. Uh, essentially, you're almost creating your own typo light module. Um, and modules rely on DCA files, uh, data container arrays, to generate the editable fields and things like that, uh, the palettes essentially for your user interface in the back end. Uh, and this allows you to kind of set that up dynamically by specifying the properties of different fields as you go. You can see uh, in our header of our catalog here, uh, we've defined the name of our catalog, the table name that goes into the database. Uh, you have some listing options here, uh, such as being able to associate an image with this catalog or uh, formatting the title string. Um, and it gives you little instructions if you read the help uh, file down here about how to format your title string appropriately. Uh, for example, if I wanted to uh, make uh, my titles in the back end bold, uh, I would essentially take the use the insert tag type syntax here to uh, make that happen. And you'll see how that works in a second. Uh, jump to page, we're going to specify our reader page. Uh, and I've created an alias field. Um, this is what's used for the jump to link to generate the URL on the front end. Uh, so you're going to want to, after you set up your alias field in your catalog, you're going to want to specify that here. Uh, and then searchable options uh, for your to catalog. Of course, you want it to be searchable. Um, and you can choose which field you want to be used in the page title at the top of your browser for the back end as well, or on the front end. Uh, and here I'm selecting my image title that I had set up. You can see here I have basically four fields. I'm going to set up a, a mini catalog of images. Um, I have a title field, which is a text field. Um, I can give it a description. That's this little text that's going to be shown underneath that field input. Uh, column name, again in database friendly format, uh, title in this case, uh, and then you have your different choices for the types of fields you can set up. Text, alias as we saw, um, we use the alias to generate the URL in the front end for the reader. Long text, number, decimal, date, checkbox, select, tags, URL, file, and taxonomy. Uh, taxonomy allows you to kind of create uh, selectable drop-down uh, items in catalog just kind of on the fly by using the hierarchy that you set up in taxonomy. Uh, whether or not uh, different properties here, the, these are handy for organizing your user interface in the back end. Uh, insert break, this is the little break line that goes there, whether or not it's visible in back end list view. Uh, yes, you're going to want to check that uh, for your title or basic uh, uh, things that you want to be able to you know, recognize when you're editing on the back end or creating new items. Um, controlling checkbox, that's really neat. Uh, it, it kind of functions the same way uh, like this sort drop down does, so that you know there's a controlling checkbox that, when checked, will reveal the field below it. And you have the option to set that up in your fields here. Um, whether or not you want it to be appear in a back end filter, back end search, uh, sort drop down, as we just saw, and different sorting modes associated with that. Um, here we're going to require that this field's mandatory. Uh, in this case, it doesn't need to be unique, though. Uh, you can insert a default value. These are just some kind of uh, database uh, types of and, and validation types of, uh, of uh, uh, fields and setting these up. 
and then you can also choose, this is pretty neat down here, uh, the ability to format your user input on the back end so that you can kind of change it and mix it around and, and so that's how, change how it's displayed on the front end. Uh, you can do that with strings, numbers, money, or date items using PHP function, sprintf, number format, money format, and date. Um, we're not going to use that here, but uh, you have that ability to do so. So you can see we've basically set up here uh, a title uh, and alias field as well. Uh, on the alias field, you choose how the alias is auto-generated which field, and we're here, you can see here we're using our image title to do that. Uh, we've also created a file type of field uh, that gives you different options. We're going to require that this one's mandatory, uh, and you can also customize your file tree to restrict to a certain folder uh, in this case, which we've done. We've restricted it to our logos folder, and even restrict it down to uh, acceptable file types uh, if you wanted to go ahead and do that. Um, and we've also constricted the display down here to 250 pixels by 250 pixels uh, for our image selections. And then our last field here is just a checkbox whether or not the, the field is published or not. And uh, we're going to filter those in the back end as well. So then when you go in and edit your catalog, you can see I've created two uh, image or data rows here essentially. Um, well, my first image, and uh, you can see here the, the alias. If I actually delete that, it'll be uh, auto-generated on save from my image title because that's what I specified it to be. And uh, I can select my image, and then you can see it's restricting to my logos folder that I had selected before. Uh, and I've checked that it's published. Um, and I've done the same thing to uh, this other set of data right here. So we have a basic catalog set up. You can see we have uh, options to actually also CSV export this to a um, uh, comma separated list uh, as well. Uh, another handy feature that's been added in. Um, but uh, the next basic steps are setting up our two modules, Lister and Reader. And when we go in there, you can see you have the option to select which catalog you want to use in this Lister, uh, as well as the redirect page, which is going to the Reader here. Uh, different layout options. Uh, we'll get into the, the how to customize those templates and layouts um, in, in our next segment. But uh, for right now, we're just going to choose the simple table catalog layout. Uh, which visible fields you want on the front end, uh, your title and image in this case is pretty much going to be it. Uh, conditions, this is if you got, for those of you familiar with MySQL, this is where you're going to add in some filterable values for your listing. Uh, obviously we're going to want to restrict it to uh, fields that have, uh, are set to published equals one or where published is checked uh, as a checkbox in the, uh, when we're editing, setting things up in the back end, as well as the order by. Uh, in this case we're going to order by title ascending. Uh, these are, if you hold your mouse over here, you can see it gives you little hints about how these things are supposed to work and get set up uh, in there. Um, query mode for searches and filters, uh, query mode for tags as well, uh, which search fields are going to be searchable, in this case the image title, uh, items per page. Uh, with a conditional list, we have some different options here, such as, um, you know, basically uh, we need to, the f other fields that must appear before a, uh, uh, or be selected or filtered before you actually display a list uh, of the items below, uh, if you're using the catalog filter on the front end. Uh, you can choose to override your image sizes. You select your image field, uh, specify the new width and height for your listing in this case, uh, and whether or not you want it to be used a uh, full size view. Um, and uh, if you have another multiple image field, you can select that as well. And that's pretty much it for our lister. Uh, for our reader page, pretty straightforward. We select our catalog, our layout. Uh, our image title and our visible uh, our, and our image as our visible fields there and that's really it and then you can see once we go into articles and add those to our listing catalog list in this case to our listing page and our catalog reader to our reader page when we go on our front end you can see we have a simple list uh, we chose simple table so it's it's got a little two little headers for image title and my image you can see it's got the title, and then there's our image. Uh, you, it's clickable. If you click on the image, it'll bring it up full screen, or in the, the media box pop-up window. Uh, same thing down there. Uh, and you can click on the header to go to your reader page that has the, the different titles and things set up with a go back link. Uh, that's basically it. So you can see we've got we've got the start. It's it's, it's uh, as you add more data, you can add, extend it down. Stay tuned for part two of catalog extension for typo light.